Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you five ways that you can take small furniture pieces in your home and give them a second life. And this first one is a little bit more involved, but you could always reimagine or alter a piece to turn it into something else. So let's take a look at this entryway bench that I created. Next project, this little bench, my mom's neighbor was actually throwing it away. We're going to have to pause for the pity because he's going to be my helper today. He hasn't been in a video in a while. <laughs> Uh, my mom's neighbor was throwing this away so she called me and she's like do you want this i think you can do something cute with it and i said absolutely of course i want it so this is what we're going to be making over today um this front little piece was actually rotten it was on there whenever my mom dropped it off my husband just ripped it right off because it was very sad and falling apart so this thing is very filthy <laughs> there he goes because there are kids walking behind the house and he's gonna go be a jerk <laughs> oh, they got so scared of him. My dog is such a jerk. Anyways, here is, um, there's like a cute little step underneath. I don't know if I'm going to like keep this trim part on. I might just get rid of that and have like a top and then a bottom part of the bench. I don't know yet. We're going to find out, but this thing's super filthy. So let's get it cleaned and get it sanded. <music> cleaning it I can tell this one is coming up even more and I don't know like this doesn't look that good it looks a little rotten down here sorry the dog he, he's not letting me I have to pet him <laughs> you can tell that it's like rotten on the sides here I'm gonna try and sand it down this was definitely more work than I was expecting already I have wood in my garage to add some new boards to that bottom there so We'll see if it gets to be too much. I might have to scrap this project, but fingers crossed we can come up with something and make it work. <laughs> what you doing? Come on. You just gonna stare at me? Yeah? Okay. Act like you're not there, I don't see you. Yeah, I don't see you at all. <laughs> oh, here he comes. There he is. <laughs> Once everything was taken apart, we went into the garage using my palm sander and this 100 grit sandpaper, and I started sanding down all of the boards. I sanded and sanded and sanded. <laughs> it took quite a while. So I started this project on a Friday night and the last thing I wanted to do for the evening was make a few small repairs. So this piece of wood was split. I just grabbed my wood glue, put it down in between the two parts of the wood, and then I grabbed a clamp and held that together to let it dry overnight. Next morning, we are going to take this off and see, I think, oh, I don't know if I went down far enough with the glue. Oh no, I think it's good. All right, so we will sand that down. I thought the back of this bench was super adorable to begin with, but very fall, and I wanted to make it a little bit more neutral and able to be used year round. Since some of my boards were really ruined, I eliminated what I could, but I really wanted to replace at least one of these fence posts so that I could have three on each side. And I had a piece of scrap wood in my garage that was the perfect width of um, the original fence posts. So I just cut them down. I drew, I traced out one of the fence parts, cut it down, and then <laughs> this is a terrible angle with my jigsaw. <laughs> I don't know why I set my camera there. It was just shaking all over the place. But now we can finally move on to priming. And I'm using my Zinzer Bin primer here just to make sure that this is going to hold up in the elements since it is technically meant to be a porch bench. I did just put one coat of the primer on all of my wood pieces. Thank you. 
after the primer dried, we can move on to our paint and I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral. I know, so neutral, so different for me, but I love this color. And I gave two coats to all of the boards. Next, we can start reassembling. So for the bench seat, I ended up eliminating one of those boards and going down to just three. And I actually ended up using the wood bench boards that were on that bottom layer of the original bench because those ones were in the best shape. So using my square here, I am just um, making sure that my boards in that brace piece underneath are lined up nice and square. And then I'm using my brad nailer to secure them down. Then we can start adding those side fence pieces back on. I just put the two tallest ones exactly where they were originally, and then I used a medium one and a small one from the original piece. Well, I did have to recreate one. Can you tell which one it is? I did decide to stagger the fence boards a little bit differently than the original. So I did want to cut them down, but not until after I had attached them to the back and the seat of the bench. So that way I would know exactly where I needed to cut them down. And then I just used my T-square, drew a line, and using my circular saw, I cut them down. Now, after I did this, hindsight's 2020. I added some wood glue because it was a little bit wobbly, the legs here, but I probably should have done that and then cut it down. It would have made my life a lot easier, but I just clamped it together for a few hours and that did the trick. Next, I took some wood filler and I did add a front little piece here to the front of the bench seat and I'm just filling in those brad nails. I didn't fill in the ones that were on the seat itself though. I liked the way those looked. Next, if you remember my bathroom renovation, you know I have this giant gallon of joint compound still left over, not even halfway gone through. So we are gonna use this to create a raised stencil. Now I added in a little bit of ivory chalk paint just to brighten up that joint compound a little bit so that it wasn't so off white. And then I also added in a little bit of this moss green color by Waverly. I wanted it to have kind of an ombre effect so I did not actually mix that green into the paint. I just swirled it a few times and then I started taking my little plastic palette knife here while the paint was just slightly swirled together and then I very lightly and thinly spread it over top of my stencil. I didn't want this to be a very raised stencil, so I did just keep going over it and smoothing it out a little. And that also helped to blend that green color into the joint compound, but also make it look a little more ombre because it wasn't entirely blended together. Oh wow. That looks so pretty. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but it has like just a hint of green in it. And I love it. Oh my gosh. I continued working my stencil all the way around the back part of my bench seat. I did just do this sparingly. I didn't want too much to be on there. I didn't want it to be too busy. And on this section, you can see I'm overlapping two boards. So I did just take a toothpick and pull out some of that joint compound so that you could see that space in between my boards. And I love the way this turned out. For this next section, I didn't end up loving the way it turned out. It was a pretty large piece of the stencil and going to be like the focal point. So since it's joint compound, it was super easy to just wipe it away and start over again. And for this part, there was a bird on it and I wanted that bird to be blue to stand out a little bit more from the greenery. So I wasn't happy with it the first time. I had just put way too much joint compound on and it looked a little bit sloppy. So I started over again again and made the joint compound a lot thinner and spread it out a lot more. And I'm so happy that I started over with this part.
Next, I'm taking the Waverly White Wax. This is the first time I have used this, but I've seen a ton of creators using white wax on projects lately, and I just love the way it looks. So I started adding the white wax to that roof looking part of the bench. So you can see two of the roofs that have the white wax and two that don't. I think it's a subtle difference, but I like it. I think it helps like tie everything together. And then I'm going to do the fence sides as well. I did end up adding two layers of the white wax because I found out the first time that I was wiping it off a little too quickly and it wasn't leaving behind as much white as I had wanted it to. I wanted there to be a visible difference between the mineral color part of the bench and then where I had added the white wax. So adding a second layer, letting it dry a little bit longer before wiping it off did the trick. And then I just touched up the mineral paint where I got some of that white wax on to the bench seat or the bench back. Next, it's time to seal this baby up. So I'm using my Minwax Polyacrylic in the clear matte finish, and I am using two different brushes for this part, and you'll see why here in just a second. So I'm using my natural bristle brush for most of this, and I'm just taking a thin coat of the poly acrylic, and I'm going over the entire back, over top of the joint compound and everything. Now, when I do get to that detailed part, I just go really gently so that I'm not knocking any of that joint compound off, but we do still want to make sure that it is sealed in there really well. So you don't want to get any drips and that polyacrylic is pretty thin and that is why I go in with this second brush to kind of dry it off a little bit and make sure that nothing is just seeping down into those little crevices and going to cause a drip. Then I just sealed in the seat portion of this bench and that was it for this one. I love the way this turned out. I really thought about keeping it, but I just have absolutely no room and nowhere to put it. So I'm gonna have to list it for sale. Next up, this is probably the easiest method that you can do, simply paint it. My neighbors were cleaning out their house to move and throwing this adorable little nightstand or phone table away, so I quickly scooped it up for myself. I cleaned it up with my crud cutter and gave it a scuff sand. Since I'm gonna be painting this with a chalk paint, I don't need to sand it too much. Then I'm taking Moss by Waverly and gave the whole thing two coats. I'm using my zebra brush here. I really love this line of brushes. You can find them at Home Depot or Lowe's, anywhere paint brushes are sold. They are perfect for different areas of your home. This is their triangle detail brush, which I also use when painting the windows in my house. It's great for detail work and getting right into these corners of furniture pieces. Next, I'm taking off the top pieces on the table. I probably should have done that before painting it, but it wasn't a big deal. And then for the stencil portion, I have this chevron pattern that came in a multi-pack from Walmart and using it only on these raised pieces on the top of the table. I like using these cheap makeup sponges from the Dollar Tree to apply the paint and you wanna make sure you don't use too much paint when adding a stencil. Less is more so your paint doesn't bleed under that plastic section. To make the stencil look seamless when I moved on to the next section, I would overlap the previous section slightly. This way it all lined up perfectly and you would never know the stencil itself was so small. I did the same thing on the bottom shelf of the table and added the stencil here. Again, I overlapped that previous section both on the side and the top to make it look seamless. I 
I love the way this turned out. I know I don't typically do a whole lot of color, but green is basically a neutral, right? It is to me anyways. This next technique I've used on a few of the projects in today's video, but adding a stencil is a great way to update your piece and tie it into your home style. I have this trifold mirror that came with my house when I moved in. We took it down when we remodeled and I didn't want to get rid of it because I actually use this thing when I dye my own hair because it helps me to be able to see the back of my head. So selfishly, I did not want to get rid of it. It just needed a little update. You can see it is super filthy because it was sitting inside while we were doing the renovation. So it needs a good cleaning and then we are going to fix this thing up. First, I'm going to remove all of the hardware and then I'm going to soak it in some Dawn dish soap with warm water to get these all cleaned up and that works so well. Next, I got to clean down this whole base of the mirror as well as the mirrors themselves. And I just use crud cutter to do this. That is my favorite method of cleaning furniture when I'm getting ready to paint it or upcycle it. Next, I'm taking my palm sander and I'm just giving this a really quick scuff sand. Nothing too major. I This isn't even real wood, so I didn't want to uh, ruin it using the sander. Then I'm taking some paint. This is just bare latex house paint and it is in the color Bit of Sugar. This is the color that I used in my bathroom makeover. If you haven't seen that, I will link it in the cards above and in my description box below, but this is what we used on the walls and I absolutely loved it. When taping off the mirrors, I just taped right up against the, I don't even know if these the side pieces are wood, the back part is what was not wood. I think it's like press board or something. But anyways, then I just take my X-Acto knife to clean up the edge to make sure I have a nice crisp line. And then I painted the mirrors as well. To paint the screws, um, I stuck them in this really thick cardboard that I had. We recently bought a new dryer and this was in the cardboard box. It's really thick, so this was a great idea to stick them down into so I could spray the tops of them with this Rust-Oleum black paint. Next, we are moving on to the fun part and creating the raised stencil. So I have this hexagon stencil that I got from Walmart. It came in a three pack and I'm just taking little bits of painter's tape and taping off the pieces that I do not want to be stenciled on to my mirror. So this part's a little tedious. It certainly uses a lot of tape, but this was well worth it for the design that I was looking for. Once I had that all figured out, I'm taking some joint compound because I have so much of this left over for my bathroom still. I'm going to be doing projects for the next year with this stuff, but I'm not mad about it and I'm just gonna spread this all over the stencil. Now you do not wanna press it in, you just wanna kind of slide it right over the top. If you start pressing it down, that's when you're gonna get it underneath of that stencil and it's gonna start to look really messy. So once I had it all on there, I'm just gonna smooth it all out and then I'm going to lift up my stencil to reveal that raised design. And how cool does this look? I absolutely love the way this turned out. But I just took a little um, toothpick and it cleaned up any little areas where that joint compound might have gotten under the stencil a little bit. I didn't want to fuss with it too much because I will be coming back in to clean it up a little bit more here in a little bit. So I just moved around the mirror and I did various sections. I did not cover the whole thing. I just did all of the corners and then a few little spots on the sides. And here's what one of the other corners is looking like. I just love this so much and I'm going to keep saying that. I know. Once everything dried, I did let this dry at least 24 hours. I might have waited longer just because I didn't have time the next day to come back to it. 
but I'm just taking some fine sandpaper and I'm gonna start smoothing out all of these uh, little hexagon pieces. So you can see how rough that one spot is and then I just took the sandpaper and smoothed it out and it looks so much better. Next I moved inside to do all of the detail work and I'm taking this mineral Waverly chalk paint and I am giving one coat to all of the little hexagon pieces. And then while this paint is still wet, I'm going to take the color Fawn and I'm gonna take the color, or the antique Waverly wax, and I'm gonna start brushing it over top of that mineral color. I want this to have a blended effect, and I wanted it to match my bathroom colors, and I really wanted it to match the vanity, which was like a light oak color, and I really couldn't find anything in my stash or even at the store that matched this, so I figured I would come up with something and make it my own or make it myself. So after I laid down all of my colors, I took a dry brush and then just blended everything together. And I just kept repeating those steps back and forth with the fawn, the mineral, the Waverly wax, and blending it all together until I was happy with the look. And the last thing I did was brush over top of it with some ivory paint to lighten it up just a smidge. So I was going to stop there, but then I thought it would be really cool for the inside of this mirror to have a, another color. So I decided to paint it black to match all of the fixtures in my bathroom. And I'm using the Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover, I think it's just semi-gloss black, and I gave this three coats. I did want to seal everything in since it will be in my bathroom. So using this polycrylic, I gave everything one really good coat. And I like to use a synthetic brush when putting on polyacrylic. I used to use a foam brush, but the little pieces would just get everywhere. And I've found using a synthetic brush works a lot better. So you just want to put on really thin layers here. And then once that was dry, it was time to put everything back together. Here's a look at the mirror in my bathroom before we ended up remodeling it. It is just a little bit plain. And then here it is after. And really it's not too dramatic of a difference. I am wondering if I should have painted the mirror a different color rather than the white. Hello. But I do still think it looks perfect in this space with everything else we have going on. And those hexagon stencil, raised stencil parts go perfectly with the shower detail. Let me know what you guys think. I love this next method, you guys. I took an outdated armchair and gave it a faux leather finish. So let's take a look. I am making over this wing back chair that my husband just had to have when we moved into this house, but the purplish burgundy color really does not go with the vibe of my living room at all. Instead of reupholstering the chair, I'm going to give it a faux leather look. Now this is not a new technique. There are several other videos from other creators over the past year that have done this, and I will link all of the videos I got inspiration from and down in my description box. Here are the supplies I'll be using. Cheap paintbrushes because they will get ruined and thrown away. Paint colors of your choice. I used a light, medium, and dark tone brown, fabric softener, and a spray bottle. The paint colors I'm using are All by Valspar, Natural Cork, Cafe Meal, and Cowboy Boots. Starting with the lightest color, I'm pouring one part paint and one part fabric softener into a mixing container. I actually found that the one-to-one -one ratio was a little bit too thick, and for the rest of the colors, I did one part paint to about three quarters fabric softener. The reason you add the fabric softener is to keep the paint from becoming crunchy and hard on the fabric surface. It also helps add to the faux leather look I'm going for. As you mix the paint, it will start to become thicker and have more of a pudding-like consistency. In the spray bottle, you wanna combine water and then more fabric softener. For this mix, I only added a splash of the fabric softener. Spray the chair down with the water mixture before applying the paint. This is going to help the paint absorb into the fabric as well as spread your paint farther. 
In some of the videos I watched, the creators would blend their paint colors with each layer. I decided to paint my entire chair in the lightest color, giving it two coats before adding in the darker shades. Here's what it's starting to look like. The right side has only one coat of paint on it and then with two coats you can see it's starting to cover up that red even more. So hopefully by the third coat you won't be able to see any more of that red showing through but this is a very difficult color to cover. Keep going with coat number two. Next, I need to mix the darker colors with the fabric softener so we can start adding depth to make this chair look like leather. As I started blending the darker tones, I added another coat of the lightest color. That way I could blend the two together easily. In the end, you really do not see the lightest color at all. And I ended up liking the darker colors better and covered the surface with those instead. To get a seamless blend, you want to go back and forth with the colors, overlapping them until you no longer see the hard edges of either color. So I've started adding in both the like medium tone and the darker of the brown tones to this. This edge here, I think looks the wing part, I think looks so good. And then like you can see this middle part is kind of muddy, doesn't really look that great. So the key that I have found to making it look really natural and seamless um, is just taking the water, spritzing it, making sure you have it nice and wet, and then going back and forth with all of your brushes, all of your colors, and just really blending everything really well. And I'm finding that to look so good. I, I can't wait to have this finished to see how it's all going to look because I think it's going to look amazing. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of the medium tone paint, literally just the, the tiniest little bit on my brush. Like, I don't know if you can even see how small it is on this brush. Like there is nothing. And then we're going to go in because it really does spread on the wet paint. Here's what the chair is looking like so far, and I'm hoping you can tell on camera. I've done several coats of the paint on both the arms, both sides, and then the back and the wings. So you can kind of tell that they are definitely a little more shiny than the seat is. So I've only done one coat on the seat and it's definitely not the right texture to have that faux leather appearance. And it also like, if you feel it, it just feels a little bit rougher. It doesn't feel as like leather-like and soft like the rest of it does. So you definitely need to build up multiple layers of this paint to get that look of the faux leather. So I'm gonna add a few more layers to the seat here. I continued building up the layers and blending my colors, adding the deepest color to all of the creases and seams of the chair. This gave it a lot of dimension and added to the leather look. The first few layers of paint you add, the fabric will not have that leather look and feel to it. It takes about four to five coats of paint before you will finally see that leathery look. So don't get discouraged if you try this and you don't see that effect right away. Are you guys ready to see this reveal? I am so excited about how it turned out. 
There's a little sneak peek of it. No one ever sat in this chair before I painted it, so I'm really not gonna be too upset if no one sits in it now. But you can also get a little sneak peek of the wall that I'm doing in my living room that will be coming up in a future video. You're so noisy when I'm filming. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at that before and after. So you can still see the pattern and the texture that was on this chair. I was never going to be able to get rid of that just because of how the print was and how the design was on the initial chair, but I kind of think it gives that almost embossed look to the fabric and I really love the way that it turned out. Friends, let me know what you think about this paint technique. Would you ever give it a try? I figured it wouldn't hurt to do a little experiment on a chair that no one uses in my home and it definitely exceeded my expectations. And lastly, you can reupholster any piece to fit your decor style. My parents bought a new house last summer. This ornate 1927 cast iron bench was part of several furniture pieces the previous owners no longer wanted. My dad did spray paint that cast iron black before bringing it to me in pieces to give it an upgrade. Now my dad spray painted this fairly recently, but I can see that there are areas where the paint has already started peeling and chipping off. In order to give this bench a new life that is going to last for years to come, I first need to give it a good sand. I'm not looking to remove the layers of paint that have been applied throughout the years, I just want to get off any peeling areas, smooth them out with a 100 grit sandpaper. And here you can see the almost 100 year old manufacturer's mark from 1927. This was the only marking on this piece, so I couldn't find any information on it while I was researching. If you know anything about this type of mark, please let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to know if that 50 means this was the 50th bench made. Here's a look at the seat cushion in its current state. I'm not sure what happened to the red fabric in the original photo, but assuming this is why it was reupholstered at one point. I believe this green fabric is the original 1927 material, which is so cool that it's still somewhat intact. I am heading to meet mom at Joanne's. We're going to pick out some fabric for this bench. We need to also get some, um, some of that like foam cushion so that it's a little bit more comfortable. You guys saw how totally ripped up that one is that's currently on there. So we need to replace that um, and then pick out some beautiful fabric that's gonna match her bedroom. So see you in Joann's. So I completely forgot to record while we were looking around, but here are the two fabrics we are looking at that will go in nicely with my mom's bedroom. The one is a little more florally and has some flow to it, while the other looks a little more simple in a crosshatch pattern. This is the one that we landed on. Such a beautiful, like large, ornate, florally pattern that's gonna go really nicely in my mom's bedroom. And then we also got the foam. So this is gonna be the new foam piece for the seat of um, the bench and we got two inch thick foam so that it's nice and cushiony and nice and soft when you sit on it. And then for the color of the wrought iron, I was gonna do black and then I was gonna be like a cream white. Actually, I'm gonna do this heirloom white color over top and then distress it back a little bit so you could see the black underneath. But after seeing this fabric and then also the colors in my mom's bedroom. She has more like rich browns as opposed to like blacks or anything really dark. So I ended up getting, I had this London gray color and then I also grabbed espresso and I'm gonna kind of spray them both on my like table here, my little work table to see which one might be better because I'm not sure which one. I think, I think it could go either way, honestly. I'm thinking the darker one is gonna show through a little bit better with the heirloom white. It's gonna be a little bit more of a contrast compared to the London gray, but I do wanna see how both of them are going to look. I really love the London gray color. I felt like it was the perfect neutral brown tone to go with the fabric. 
Now I know this is called London Grey, but it definitely is more of a grayish, not a true gray, and kind of takes on the tone of the pieces around it. So if you have more gray cool tones, it looks more gray. If you have more warm brown tones, it looks more brown. While the spray paint is drying, I started working on the seat cushion. Remember what that thing looked like? Pretty beat up, but I also can't get over the fact that I'm touching something that has survived almost a century. But let me tell you, as I started taking the fabric off, you could tell it was aged. It was so brittle and just tore apart super easily. I had to get this black cover fabric off in order to get to the staples underneath, or at least what I thought would be staples. There were no staples holding the fabric in place. It was true furniture tacks. They did not cut corners back in the day. I can only imagine how long it must have taken to nail in each one of these tacks. Even the wood piece is original. I promise I'm gonna stop gushing over all of these original materials, but it is so cool. I tried prying up the tacks, but they were too tight against the fabric, so I needed to remove that fabric so I could get under the tacks. And since this fabric was so brittle, it just tore right off. Now I can get under the tacks. I'm using a chisel here, don't ask me why, but a flathead screwdriver would work just as well. And I did not pull out every single tack, only the ones that were sti sticking up out of the wood. Once I got all of the tacks I wanted out, I flipped it over to remove that old fabric and padding. And you guys, look at this. I'm not sure if this was just straw or horsehair, but I know they used to use horsehair back in the day as padding. This stuff was also tacked down and I had to rip it off. It was still pretty secure down there. And let me tell you, this made a mess. Now it's time to give that padding a serious upgrade. I'm using two inch high density foam from Joann's. You can buy this by the yard. And I set the wood for the bench upside down on top of the foam. Then I traced around the wood board with a Sharpie and cut it out. I just used my fabric scissors to cut the foam. This worked fine, but I'm sure there are better tools out there to use. I was also able to use the one foam square and cut two sides out for the seat. Once everything's put together, you aren't going to see or feel that this is two separate pieces. Next, I hot glued the foam down to the wood and I also hot glued the two pieces together in the center. I did have to hold the foam, squeezing it together while the glue cooled. Now I can add the batting. This part is super easy and just helps to clean up the look of those jagged foam edges. You don't wanna pull it too tight because it will pull apart, but pull it tight enough to have a smooth look and then staple it down and cut off the excess material. Next, I can add the final fabric that we chose, doing the same thing as with the batting, smoothing it out and then stapled it down to the wood. This fabric is pretty thick and forgiving. However, it does not have stretch. So when I got to the rounded ends, I had to get a little creative. I didn't want the whole end to look like a fold. So instead I made two smaller folds right where the seat starts to curve. To finish off the bench seat, I wanted to add some trim to the bottom. So I got this twisted cording and glued it down along the edge. I didn't want to use my hot glue because I was afraid that would not hold up well over time. So I used my Starbond super glue with the accelerator that instantly dries the glue. Okay, let's go back to the cast iron parts. So you can see the spray paint I used has a sheen to it, which is not the look we're going for. So I sprayed it with a matte sealer. <laughs> we currently have no power. So I wanna get this bench finished because I want to give it to my mom this weekend so I can film the reveal of her like her reaction to it and film it in her space and then have time to edit this video before it goes up so sarge and i have set up shop huh buddy sarge huh buddy yeah we've set up shop here on the front porch so that we can try and get the white wax going on top of the like painted surface that i've already done you helping you helping, Sarge? Yeah, checking out what we got going on? Oh, buddy, you helping? I'm a big helper. Yes, okay. So we got our 
Dixie Belle Bestang Wax in white. This is what I'm going to use to dry brush like over top so we can bring out all of the details on this bench along with like all of this beautiful ornate detail everywhere. I just want to be able to, you know, showcase that a little bit better and then make it stand out. So got my paper towels here to wipe it off. I got my little wax brush, which I don't know how I feel about this brush. It's from Walmart, it's cheap. I don't know. We'll see how it goes on this project. I can tell you, I am not a fan of this wax brush. It sheds like crazy, but it does do the job. Here you can see how it looks with the white wax compared to without. The details really pop with the wax on, however, it was also changing the tone of the paint. So disappointing. It was leaning much more gray now. I do love how the wax made the manufacturer's mark stand out even more though. But I kept going with the white wax and finished up this piece. We are packed up, heading to mom's. We're gonna see if she likes the bench. What do you think, Mace? Is she gonna like it? What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's gonna love it. All right, let's go see you at mom's. Now let's get this thing set up, all right? Hold up. Before we get mom's reaction, you might notice that the bench is a different color. So after looking at it for a few days after I had it finished, it was just looking way too gray and I knew that wasn't gonna go with my mom's bedroom. So I redid the entire thing doing the same exact process of the paint and the white wax. I just used a darker, deeper brown that was gonna go with her bedroom a little bit better. All right, let's get her reaction. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, so you left that? I did it dark. So, oh, that's so cool. I thought the white would be too, it wasn't gonna look right yeah. with the Oh my oh, gosh, wow. it's perfect. It that's looks, beautiful. it looks, um, Oh my. it looks, what do I, what mm -hmm. word do I wanna use? Like, like old, like yeah, it's more. Vintage. It is, it's vintage, beautiful. Antique. Antique, oh, wow, wow, vintage. Wow. Look at how beautiful mm -hmm. it looks. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It, it kind of matches with this thing. And it, it's, it's perfect. It, it pulls everything together. Yep. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a great job. I asked you to turn the music off. It wasn't recording. Oh, no. Oh, should we do it again? No, it's fine. We can do it again. We'll do it again. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did I did my phone, too. So I at least have something. Yeah. 